everyone, it's me Alex and welcome to my rare plant haul. It occurred to me that a fair few people watching this video probably have never watched one of my videos before because this is the first time I've ever posted a video specifically about indoor houseplants and I'm sure that there's an entire community out there on YouTube that wants this sort of content but people that are usually subscribed to me are interested in fashion or maybe they're interested in travel to Japan so if you are someone that's clicked on this video because plants are your thing welcome to the pretty pastel please side of YouTube I hope that you stay please subscribe if you enjoyed today's video please give me a thumbs up too if you like the plant content because I have a lot of plants and a lot of content I could make. But I'm just sort of throwing this video out there as a little bit of a teaser, just to test the waters, dip my feet in, see how people enjoy the plant content. So, essentially what happened today to trigger the filming of this video, um, you know how sometimes you'll go out to buy one thing and then you'll come back with 20 things. 21 things to be precise. Uh, yep, yeah, anyone that's into plants probably knows exactly what I mean. I was uh, at Flower Power Garden Center the other day and I put a picture up on Instagram and one of my followers said to me, hey, if you like Flower Power in Dural, you definitely have to check out Mother Earth Nursery in Kenthurst, which is just down the road. So I went on their Instagram page and the first thing that I saw on their page was a picture of this adorable little succulent or I think it's a succulent. I, at first I thought it was a ZZ plant with like a pink variegation or something. And uh, then I noticed how the stem was a zigzag. And I was like, what is this plant? I need it. I've never seen this before. I didn't know it existed. It is so cute. I want it. And I headed out to the nursery to buy that plant. And when I got there, let me just say, out of all the places I've been to that sell houseplants, I've never seen such a large collection of rare plants before. So part of the reason that I titled this video as the $500 rare plant haul is because there are definitely some actual rare plants in here that everyone will know that they're rare. But then there's also some plants that they're rare to me because I, I've never seen them before. They may be available in your country quite easily, but Australia has really strict um, biosecurity laws and it's, it's quite difficult to import seeds and plants into our country. So don't worry, I totally understand if you leave a comment and you say, Alex, that, that isn't rare. It's rare to me. <laughs> so I just have a quick disclaimer before I get into the plant haul because I understand that it probably seems absolutely crazy to see someone spend $500 on plants. And that wasn't originally my intention, but when I got to the nursery, we were the only people there it was beautiful. It was a small, quaint little place. There were two people working. They were so friendly to me. They, they were just the nicest people. And they were. I was asking them about their business and they were telling me how they've been impacted over the past year, how sales have gone up, but also it's been really difficult for them to acquire plants because so many people now want to buy plants that the large distributors like Bunnings, for example, those large places are buying up all of the stock of the plants and it's been really hard for the little guys with the little nurseries to actually get stock of certain things. So when I heard that and I was talking to the people and I thought they are so nice and I want to show my support for this business and because I'm a YouTuber, I feel like everyone knows this, as a YouTuber I make ad revenue. So when you watch my video and an ad plays, if you watch the ad, I make a uh, a small amount of money from each view of the ads. So in posting this video, I can actually make back money. So I don't really feel guilty so much when I spend a bit more money than I need to. So I said to myself, look, I wanna support this beautiful place, these beautiful people. And I said to them, guys, can you please lead me to your rarest plants? I'd like to buy all of your rarest plants. And they were like, Okay, okay, and they're probably thinking, she's gonna get like one or two. And uh, he took me around the nursery and he was showing me, you know, he was picking individual plants up and saying, now this one is from Mexico and this one's from Burma and this one's from the Galapagos Islands, you know, and he's telling me he knew everything. His name was Mark. Hello Mark, if you happen to stumble across this video, thank you so much for your time today. It was very informative. Mark knew everything there is to know about every single plant. And there were some plants that were way more rare than some of the ones that I purchased here, but I didn't purchase them because they weren't my style. I tr when I buy plants, I try to get plants that I think are cute or pretty or interesting and quirky. Some of them were so rare and they were so strange. Like there was this one, I've never seen anything like that. He had that plant 
and I was thinking of buying it, but also I didn't really like the leaves that much and I was like, I'd rather spend my money on something really pretty. So anyway, that's a, just a brief disclaimer as to why I splurged so much money because I wanted to show my support to this small business. I wanted to give them some money. I know I can make some money back just by uploading this video. So that's just a little bit of a disclaimer before I get into these plies because I know for, for some of you, for my regular audience, for those of you that watch me for you know my other content and you're like, oh yeah, I'll just watch this video about plants. I don't like plants. I know. I know you're going to look at me, pick up that jewel orchid and you're going to go, you spent $60 on that? What? <laughs> I know you're gonna freak out. <laughs> so I just wanted to put the disclaimer out there and like, I hope that makes sense. I'm very sorry about rambling. I know you're here for plants. So let me show you the plants. I have arranged them in order from least rare to rarest. And uh, also there's a couple that just, they're not rare plants at all. Um, I just tacked them on because I just really wanted to show you. Um, I'm also gonna show you the price. And I know some of you are probably gonna be appalled <laughs> by some of these prices. But like I said, I could justify it because I wanted to support the small business. I've never seen some of these plants before and I don't know when I'm ever gonna see them again. And I had a really, really bad experience one time buying a Hoya. I bought it online. It was a lot cheaper to buy it off the Facebook marketplace, but when it arrived in the mail, it was dead. So I was like, mm, yes, I could buy them online for cheaper potentially, but they may not survive the trip. So with that, plant number one is this Skindapsis, Pictus argyreus also known as a satin pothos. Now this was $35 for this little basket here. And the reason that I purchased this, I love the satin pothos, but the ones that I have, I've got a few of them in my house. They have huge leaves and they don't grow so densely together. And they don't have this really nice silvery border around the outside. Now I know what these look like when you grow them up a post, they look so beautiful. And I just love the idea of having the ones I already own with the really large leaves and then this one with its little little tiny leaves that are more densely packed together. I have never seen one available in any of the stores that I've ever been to. So I had to get this one straight away. The next one is this Skindapsis Pictus Exotica. This was $40. Now the leaves, the size and shape of these leaves are the same as the other satin pothos plants that I own already, except this one is much more silvery. So the ones I have, the leaves are very, very dark green and there's little teeny tiny splashes of silver in the leaves. This one, the whole leaf is super silvery and I've, again, I've wanted one of these for the longest time too. So I couldn't help myself when I saw this. This was the only one that they had. So despite being $40, I was like, oh, that's worth it to me because the amount of joy that this plant brings me. And also I really recommend these to anyone that's not a plant, expert. If you're a beginner, these are very easy to look after, at least in my experience. When I first came across these, not this silvery version, but my darker ones, I bought four of them at once because I thought, what I'm going to do, I'll set them up in different rooms around my house and I'll see how they react to the light and I'll see which ones grow the best. In my experience, the more sunlight you give them, the lighter green the leaves are. When you don't give them very much sunlight, I found that the leaves were darker. No matter what the lighting situation is that I've put all of them in, they've all just thrived. They don't need a huge amount of water. I don't really worry that much about the soil medium. No matter how big they get, uh, so far I haven't had to repot them. So this is, a, I think this is a very easy beginner's plant. And uh, I actually learned something really interesting at the nursery today. So when we were at the checkout and we were scanning all of the plants, he gave me a bit of advice about all of them. And he said, now make sure that you give this one something good to climb up because if you don't give it something to climb up, when they hang downwards, their leaves grow smaller. But when they're forced to climb, their leaves get bigger. And uh, I was like, sorry, why did that never occur to me before? I have this adorable little Monstera at a, at, at the Sony. When I first got it, its leaves, each leaf was like this big and it's got a, it's got a very, very, very long climbing arm. But as you progress down the arm, the leaves go from big and they go slightly smaller, slightly smaller. And the most recent leaves, they grow and they never get any bigger than that. And I've been thinking to myself, what does this plant want? I've given it fertilizer, I've given it plenty of light, it's had good water. What do you want, little plant? And then he said to me today, he's like, if you let plants climb, their leaves get bigger. If you let them drop, their leaves get smaller. There you go, there's a tip for you guys. <laughs> so as beautiful as it looks to have something sitting up and have it dropping downwards, if you want the leaves to get 
big and full, you need to let it climb, let that baby climb. So I'm very, very excited to actually do this right this time with this plant because all my others, I've been letting them grow downwards. I had this one here on this little plant stand making its way down, climbing its way all the way down and it shot down. It went so quickly. It went literally from this long to this long in um, a one month, I would say. So now I've switched the direction of the leaves of my other one and uh, he's growing upwards now. I don't know whether that means that the leaves that are currently small, I don't know if they'll get any bigger now. I don't know if they've reached their maximum growing potential. Maybe they'll be small there and then now it'll start growing really big ones at the end. I'm not sure how it's gonna work. But anyway, that's just a little bit of information for any of you guys. If you want the nice big leaves, grow it upwards. All right, next up, we have this really cute little succulent. I got this from Flower Power, but I've just chucked it in the video because I wanted to show you because what I ideally want to find is a moon, I think they're called moonstone succulents. They're like this. I've never seen one in the wild. I've never seen one in a store. I don't know where to buy one. Every listing I've seen online was so expensive. And I spotted this at Flower Power and I thought, well, it's not quite the same, but its leaves are nice and fat and plump. I also really liked it because it already came with this pot with the little eggs on it. It's got little pebbles on the top here and uh, it was $40, but this pot is absolutely beautiful. It's got a drainage hole in the bottom too. I liked the presentation and I love that with these succulents, they're quite low maintenance and it just looks really pretty and it's really full on the top. It's going out in all different directions. It's just, it's a very cute looking plant. So I got this one to sit in a more hardy location in the house. All right, next. This was $13. This is called a Persian Shield. This has the most beautiful, rich purple leaves. It's stunning. I'd never seen one of these before. The moment that I laid eyes on it, I was I fell in love with the leaves. Look how the light shines through it. And as I tilt it, you can actually see it goes from a greenish yellow to a dark purple, depending on where the light hits it. I was fascinated and I was really surprised it was only $13 because when I saw it, I thought, rare, rare, that's gonna be 50 bucks, $13. Very reasonably priced. I don't know how big this is going to get. I don't really know much about its watering schedule or you know how much light or anything that it needs. Um, I downloaded an app, I had to pay for it. It's called Picture This. I, th I think it was a couple of dollars in the app store, I can't remember. No, no, it wasn't. No, it was expensive actually. I think it's like 12 bucks a month. Actually, I'm gonna have to check on that. You guys ever end up with an Apple subscription that you forget about? And then you remember a couple of years later and realized you've been paying hundreds of dollars for this app that you opened once and thought, I'll cancel the subscription. And then you didn't. I haven't canceled my picture this subscription yet because I've actually found it really, really helpful. You can just hold any plant up and take a picture and the app tells you what it is, tells you where you should position it, how much water it needs, uh, what sort of diseases it's susceptible. Like it tells you everything. So um, I'm gonna do a little bit of research on this one. I don't know much about it, but even if it stayed the way it is, even if it stayed this big forever, I would be very happy because it's so cute. All right, next, adorable little $10 jelly bean succulent. I just really liked how sun stressed he was. Look how pink his leaves are. I don't know very much about sun stressing succulents. I've experimented with a couple and I've never been able to produce the pinkish kind of tones. And I follow a few people on Instagram that have successfully made pastel succulents just by stressing them out. But my succulents live a very stress-free life. Even when I try to stress them out, nothing seems to bother them. So if you have some tips on how to stress the succulents so that they go pink. This one was just sitting out in the nursery, out in the sunlight, in direct sunlight. So I guess that's just give it all day sunlight and don't give it very much water. If you know, please let me know because I need to know. Now this, this is called a zebra plant. What made me notice it, it was the only one sitting among a bunch of begonias and I just, I saw these striking stripy leaves and I was like, whoa. I love, it just, it looks like a skeleton. It looks like a fish skeleton. It's so cool. This was $20 and the picture here actually shows that they get this almost pineapple looking flower on them. I'm gonna need to do a bit of research to see what time of the year that I'll get the flower, uh, how much I should be fertilizing it, all that sort of thing. But I really like the size that it is right now. I know with some plants, if you keep them in a smaller pot, they will just stay the size that they are. And if you want them to get bigger, you give them a size up and they will fill out the pot and get bigger. I don't know if this is a plant like that, 
This probably looks really cool if it gets super, super big, but that's, you know, sometimes I'm like, I like them when they're little baby plants. I just want them to stay little babies forever. Like puppies, you just want them to be little babies forever. But as a parent, you gotta let them go. You gotta let them grow up. And they grow so fast, unless they're a Hoya Kerry, in which case they will live in your basement rent free until they're 40. <laughs> plant person joke. <laughs> to be fair, I'm not really a plant person. I have a lot of plants, but I'm not very knowledgeable. I would actually give the honor of a plant person to someone like Mark who worked at the nursery, who you could point at anything and he knew every single thing there is to know about every single plant in that place. I would call that a plant person. I'm a plant enthusiast. All right, the very last thing that is not rare in any way at all, but I had to buy it. This is a string of pearls. I have three string of pearl plants that haven't grown a centimeter in six months. If the string of pearl plant really does grow at that rate, this one must be as old as Wolverine because look how long it is. Uh, <laughs> the crazy thing is this was $26 and all the other string of heart. Oh, did I, have I been saying string of hearts? It's a string of pearls. You, you'd think I would remember that it's a string of pearls considering they look like pearls. Although when my dad saw it, he was like, are they peas? I said, yes, dad, this is a very rare pea on a stick plant. I paid $26 for the ones that I have and they have no length to them at all. They're just like that long. This one was also $26 and look how much growth. Look at this, this is ridiculous. This is longer than my hair. You know what is so cool? This has to be one of the most beautiful planters I've ever seen. I got this at the Mother Earth Nursery. This was $85 which is probably a bit too much, but it's stunning. She's got these beautiful roses on a crown around her head and you put the plant in there. It's got a drainage hole too. And my thought process was, if it feeds, please feed, oh, please feed. I don't want to deep. Ah. All right, well, I may have to depot this string of pearls. Ideally, I want her to have what looks like hair trailing down. So how pretty would that be if this was a really, really full string of pearls? That would just be like the most unbelievably stunning thing imaginable. But it's not a very full string of pearls. There's really only two strings of peas. So I don't know if I should take some of the other string of pearls that I have and try to pot them all up together to give this some more strands, to give her a little bit of volume in her hair. So she looks like a Swartzkopf ad, or maybe I should just pick a different plant. What sort of plant would you put in that Head. What sort of hair should she grow? Maybe a snake plant so she could be like Medusa. All right, now we're getting into... Oh, wait. Hang on, this is, this is my plant. I've had this for a long time, a very long time, and it's hardly grown. I've got this little turtle planter that Tiasha and Millie gave me, and I put a string of turtles in it. Oh, oh kind of. Oh, kind of. Oh, not quite as luscious, but as the string of turtles gets bigger, okay, maybe, maybe I'll use the string of turtles. Oh, I don't know, tell me, can, do you have any plant recommendations for what I should give her growing out of her head? Please let me know. But now, now for the, what I would consider to be like legitimately rare plants. I love peperomias. Originally I was like, ah oh, yes, a peperomia. And I thought there was just one, plant called a peperomia. And then I slowly started to realize when I walked into a Bunnings one day and I was like, that says it's a peperomia, but my peperomia doesn't have red leaves. Turns out there's many, many, many variations of peperomias and I've been buying them almost every time that I see them. And I bought this one today. This is called a peperomia pink lady. I've never seen one of these before, but this has pink stems and little bits of pink splashes all through the leaves. It is so cute. They also had a peperomia, it was called like a gold coin or something, I can't remember. It was like a gold colored peperomia. And I think I may go back for it, but also it, it was nowhere near as pretty as this one. And it was more expensive. And he was telling me it's really rare. It's a rare peperomia. And the part of me was like, oh, I should get it because it's rare. But also I was like, no, don't, don't waste money unnecessarily. Like if the plant doesn't spark a huge amount of joy when I look at it, don't just buy it purely because it's rare. I was just trying to buy things that I was like, if, if it's rare and I love looking at it. And obviously 
I had to get this. I know some people wonder what the difference is between a peperomia and a pilia. So peperomias, they grow out individual little stems from the bottom. See how there's many, many, many little stems growing out from the base? But a pilia will grow like a single stem and then from that central trunk, then it grows out its other leaves. They do have quite similar looking leaves, but uh, that's something that I learned that some people may find useful. All right, next, I hope this blows some people's minds. So when I said to him, can you show me your rarest plants? He said, and he walked me straight to this one. And when I first looked at it, I was like, ah, oh, yes, it might be rare, but it's kind of ugly. But then he picked it up and he put it in the light. This is a begonia cathedral windows. Now I don't have any other begonias because begonias kind of creep me out a little bit. They look kind of spiky and hairy and they look like something from another planet. And uh, even though some of them have really nice pink colorings, I just, I'm not the biggest fan of the begonias, but he held this up in the sun. It's called cathedral windows because the leaves are like cathedral windows. Look at the way the sun is shining through them. Isn't that unbearably incredible? When he walked me over to it and he was like, very rare. I was like, eh, that's a no from me. But then he went like that and I saw the cathedral windows and I heard the angels singing and I knew I had to buy it. So it was only $20 too. I'm probably going to put this in a hanging pot way high up on the window. So it's like hanging just at the very top of the window. So the light is always shining through it. And uh, also that way I don't actually have to ever look at the top of the leaves. <laughs> All right, next. Yes, I did actually buy what I went there to buy. And I came away with two of them. I don't know why I bought two. I could have stopped at one. But I was like, what if one dies? So this is called a Euphorbia zigzag, AKA devil's backbone. <laughs> the stem of it is literally a zigzag. These leaves have beautiful pink edges and uh, the lady at the nursery was telling me that when they get bigger, they will actually grow multiple stalks off them. They don't always stay as just a single stem, but she said, you can always just give it a snip and repot it if you just want it to have that singular kind of devil's backbone appearance. She told me, so much about this plant. I think she was talking about this plant for 10 minutes and I don't remember everything that she said because I heard so much about so many plants today that I wasn't able to retain all the information. I'm glad that I did actually remember to buy this plant. I wouldn't have been half surprised with myself if I'd gone all the way there to get that and then got so distracted by these that I forgot to buy that. I've done that many times. Anyway, next we have a philodendron Mecans? Mecans? Mycans. I love philodendrons. They're very easy to care for. Low maintenance plant. I find that they grow in literally any condition. And this one, this is a rare one. They are really soft, micro little teeny tiny furs on these leaves that makes it feel like velvet. It's like a very matte kind of texture. It's so satisfying to touch. From a distance, you wouldn't know that it feels like that, but it's... It is ASMR to just stand and caress this plant. The new leaves always start off as this kind of reddish burgundy kind of color. And then they do eventually turn darker. When my first philodendron was growing its new leaves and I noticed that some of them were a red color, I was like, oh God, what have I done? I can't keep anything alive. But uh, alas, that's just what they do. They start off red and they turn green. Kind of like me. This one was $40 and uh, I have never ever seen one of these and actually I put a picture up on Instagram and people were commenting and they were like, is that a philodendron me can? So obviously other people must acknowledge that this one is rare. <laughs> Some of these others you guys are probably like, that's the, the pig pepperoni is not rare, but let's all acknowledge this is rare. Like a steak for dinner. All right, next up, I think this is rare. I've never seen this before. This is called a Piper Crocatum. This was $30. Look at these leaves. These leaves have pink veins running through them, just like me. He had several of these, and I originally put one in my basket that was half this height. It was a little bit fuller at the bottom, but it was half this height. Then as I was walking out after I paid, I noticed this, and I said to him, because it was exactly the same price, and I said, oh, can I swap them? And he's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. This is, I just, there's something about the symmetry of the way that this is growing. You know what it is? It's tessellating. It's leaf here, leaf there, leaf here, leaf there, leaf here. <sighs> when life imitates art. All right, next, something I've been trying to get my hands on for six months. This 
is an Oxalis triangularis. This is also known as a false shamrock. This was $50. I can hear people screaming, Alex, you paid $50 for a weed, but it is a weed that closes at night and opens in the daylight. Actually, funnily enough, when I brought this upstairs from downstairs, there was no sunlight in my downstairs room and all of the leaves were folded up like this. And as I've been sitting here filming this video, silly old me, if I'd had it sitting in the background while I've been filming all this time, you would have literally watched the leaves as they opened back up again. I feel like I'm going to ruin his sleep schedule because it's 6 p.m. right now and it got dark downstairs and I've come into this room here because this is the only room in the whole house that still has a little bit of sunlight shining through the window. And uh, he fell asleep downstairs and then I woke him up abruptly and brought him back up into the sunlight and he was like, oh, it's just nodding off. <laughs> but uh, later tonight, I'll, t I'll snap a picture of it so you can see when it closes up. But I've been trying so hard to find this. I actually have a Google alert set. You know on Google if you search something and then you can actually set an alert for it. So whenever something appears on Google that has those words, you'll get an email. And I have alerts set up waiting for people to sell these. And I got an alert recently that a private seller online had one available, or I think they had a few available. And I opened the email at one day after I received it. And I was like, yay! And I went to buy it, sold out. They sell so quickly. These go dormant. Uh, I believe these go dormant in winter. These actually have, oh, I don't remember what they're called. They're little teeny tiny, what's the word for them? The, the, oh, I can't remember what they're called. They're these little tiny balls basically. Like they grow out of these little nodule kind of things. And uh, if, if the leaves die off, that's okay. You can just hang on to those little balls that are in the soil and then it'll grow again. I expected to pay this sort of money for it and uh, this was the only one they had in the place, in the whole nursery, the only one. And also, it was in a really weird spot. It had some other really big plants in front of it. I feel like I was, I was walking through that nursery with like a magnifying glass looking at everything. And I think a lot of people as they're walking, they just kind of glance across things and I don't think that they would have noticed it where it was. That's probably why it was the only one left. I'm so excited. Another one that people are going to scream. This was the only one they had in the store. I have a little thing for jewel orchids. I think they're beautiful. I have one other that I've had for many, many months. It hadn't grown a millimetre. And my friend said to me, oh, it's because you need to keep it in like a very, very humid environment. So I put it in this little glass greenhouse from Ikea with a humidifier inside the little greenhouse. It's just this teeny tiny little greenhouse. It was actually the wishing well at our wedding. I got it on Gumtree for $5. And uh, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent, but as soon as I put it in there with the humidifier, it grew a new leaf in a week. So when I saw this, this is a jewel orchid Ludizia. That this was $50. But the way I will justify it to my husband is uh, when they grow, and I confirmed this with Man at the Nursery, I said, how big can they possibly get? And he said that he's seen them as big as like this. Not the leaves, the leaves stay small, but it should just keep growing bits off it and it can get bigger and bigger. And uh, my thought process is that if one day, if I don't kill all of these plants as soon as winter comes, if they start getting really, really big, I could possibly start taking cuttings and I could start a little business or something, a little side gig. So the way that I'll justify it to my husband is, yes, it's $50 now, but in 25 years, when it's this big, I could take a cutting off it and sell that for $50. <laughs> There's really not very much to say about this. It's small. Um, it's cute. What I like most about it is this, once again, like that philodendron, this has velvet leaves. If you closed your eyes and you reached out and someone said, touch this, what do you think it is? You'd probably say it's a piece of fabric, like it's a piece of suede or velvet. It's just got the most beautiful texture. Plants like this do make me nervous though, because I'm like, it's so little. And if I do anything wrong and it dies, that's just wee, it's just gone, <laughs> just like that. At least with a bigger plant that's got many, many stems and stuff. If one or two leaves dies, it's like, yeah, okay, that's fine. There's 30 others. With this, it's like, ah, two leaves died. There is no plant anymore. <laughs> Next, I, I, I think this is rare, but it might not be. But this is a Syngonium Wedlandi Black Velvet. Again, velvety leaves. 
look at the beautiful color. I love the streak down the center that's this light color. I love when the sun shines through, it kind of glows. It actually looks like jade or something. I love velvet plants. I actually placed an order for a Alocasia black velvet, which he's gonna order in for me. And I actually learned from the guy at the nursery today that plants that have the velvet on them, when they feel like velvet, it's actually because they've got these little tiny microscopic hairs that they put out because they're trying to absorb moisture. So the little teeny tiny hairs actually draw moisture in from the air and they store the water in their leaves. So you shouldn't mist plants that have the velvet kind of feel to them. If you mist them, you can oversaturate because those little hairs will basically drown. It's almost like us as humans, we've got hair all over us, although we don't absorb water with our hair, or do we? No, surely not. Look, I dropped science. They store the water in their leaves, so they are a little bit hardier. They can go a little bit longer without being watered because there is water stored in the leaves. So at least that's what I was told. So I'm very interested to put that to the test and see just how much time there is in between waterings. But uh, this, I don't know how big it's going to get, but if it's anything like my other Syngoniums, it'll get really, really big. So really excited about this one. Now next, this it confused me. This is a begonia. So I went from owning no begonias because I thought they were ugly to owning two. <laughs> now this is called a begonia maculata whitey? Whitey? A spotted begonia. This was $50 and originally I walked up to it and I was like that's a cool looking begonia and I picked it up and I saw it's 50 bucks and Caitlin, Caitlin was with me and Caitlin was like I just got a begonia the other day but I only paid 10 for mine and I said I wonder why this one's so much more expensive and Caitlin said it's probably because this is like a small business and the one that I got was from Woolworths and that's like a national, you know, national chain. Uh, but I was like, no, there's no way because other things here were reasonably priced. I was like, there's gotta be something about this begonia that makes it special. And sure enough, when I took it up to the man at the nursery and I said, why is this begonia more expensive than other begonias that we've seen? He said, ah, let me show you. And he pulled up another begonia, which looked almost identical. Like to the untrained eye, you probably wouldn't really know the difference. But as he pointed out the differences, I realized that what makes me not like begonias is they have these really weird kind of like crinkly edges. And I know some people love it. No, sh no shade if you, if you like begonias, not my style because just the, they look very harsh, like jagged on the edges. And I really like things that kind of look soft. That's why I like the, you know, chubby little jelly bean succulents and things like that. I really like things that have soft curves to them. So the begonias, I'm like, oh, it's a little bit too harsh to look at. But he said the difference is the edges of this begonia, the Maculata whitey, they don't have the crinkly edges. And he also said they go very, very silvery. The spots that are on this are quite literally silver. I don't know if it'll be able to pick it up in the camera, but this looks like um, you know when you get like a high-vis vest? It looks like high-vis material. Like when you turn it, it reflects. It's actually completely reflective. It's not like the other begonias that just have like a white spot. This is a reflective silver spot. And he said that it comes out the older that the plant gets, the more silvery that these spots will look. And it'll actually look like it's got like silver paint spots on it. And I was like, that's so cool. I can get a begonia without the ugly crinkly edges. And it looks like a unicorn sneezed on it? Sold. Next up is a really weird succulent that I've never seen before. This is called a Crassula Buddha's Temple. This was $25. And at first I was like, oh, look at that poor guy. He looks really sad. He's fallen over. But no, no, they just grow kind of like a big floppy alien Really unusual. Not really cute, but also so quirky to look at. And I'm just very excited to see what this turns into. I hope that it turns into some enormous, massive thing. But even if it stays exactly like it is for the rest of its little old life, it's just so cool how geometric that some succulents can be. Succulents are supposed to be easy to look after, but I have killed, actually of all the plants that I've killed, I think I've killed four plants since I started buying plants. Three of them were succulents. <laughs> and. I very rarely water the succulents, but then I'm like, oh yes, the soil's bone dry, I'll give it a water. And then I come back a couple of days later and it's dead because I gave it too much water. So I hope that this one doesn't meet the same fate. Next up, 
I've been looking for one of these for so long. This was the last one in the nursery. My friend that has one of these herself, she bought it on eBay and she paid $50 for it. And uh, this was 45. This is a silver dollar vine. They call it, the actual name is called a Zero, Zero Sikyos. Zero Sikyos. Dengai, zero sikyos dengai. It's called a silver dollar vine because the little tiny leaves are perfectly round and they look like dollar coins. And I believe that it gets the silver in its name because it does eventually turn like a silvery kind of color. At the moment it's quite green, but the one that my friend has, it, it's a lot older than this one. Its leaves are almost like a silver kind of green. And you know what I was saying? I love plants with soft edges and like a round leaf and stuff. This, like look, I've got circular leaves here with the dollar vine. I've got peas on a stick. The peperomia leaves are almost round. The, it just makes me so happy, so aesthetically pleasing. So I don't know how quickly or slow that this one grows. So I'll do a little bit more research into it, but I just, I couldn't believe that he had one of these. I've been Googling, I've been looking every couple of weeks. I do my little, I do my rounds on Google and I type plant names in and I see if anything's available online. I've never found one of these. So very, very happy. And last but not least, this is probably not actually a rare plant. No, let's be honest, this is not a rare plant. I included it with the rare plants because to some people it's very hard to find. This is a variegated string of hearts. Now he had a fair few of these and I picked this one specifically because if I can untangle her. <gasps> no, I spend way too much time untangling the string of hearts that I have. I know one day if I ever have a daughter, I'll spend hours brushing her hair because there's just something so pleasing about untangling things. So I picked this one specifically because it's got a lovely, very, very long string here. And then we've also got four other strands hanging down. And this actually just fell off it. I don't know what where this fell off, but it's not the end of the world. If things fall off your string of hearts, they're actually very, very easy to propagate. I've seen some people have success with water propagating, but also if you take something like this, you can remove a couple of the leaves so that you've got just the stem and you need the node. So the node is just the little chunky part where the leaves come out of. So you can just bury the node in a little bit of soil, get like a takeaway container, just lay this across the dirt and make sure that it's sort of nestled into the dirt a little bit. Give it a spray every couple of days and keep the lid on the takeaway container. And within a couple of weeks, it'll give you little tiny roots. You can then take it out of the container, pop it in one of these, and uh, it'll take off. You can just put one of these straight into a pot with a lot of soil, which should give you better results in terms of growth because there's more soil in the pot for the roots to kind of sink down into. When you do it in a little shallow container, the roots can only get so long, which will keep it kind of short. Either way that you do it, the main thing is that you actually get the little strand to grow roots. You, you need to encourage the root growth because once it's got roots, it'll actually start to grow properly. So it's easier to get the roots to grow if you keep it in like a sort of humid environment, like a takeaway container, but it will take you longer in the long run because when you remove it from the takeaway container and then you replant it, it then has to reestablish its roots and then go from there. So look, either way that you do it, don't worry if bits fall off your string of hearts. I'm actually gonna give this to Tiasha. She said to me the other day, she saw my other string of hearts and she was like, oh, you know, when it gets a bit longer, I'd really like a cutting. Now I can give her a variegated version. Now, another reason that I bought this is because of the beautiful planter that I got because her flowers on her crown are like gray and pink. And I thought that it would look beautiful with the variegated string of hearts as her hair. And it definitely would. But the pot that this is in right now is way too big for this, the openings were not big enough. So I would either have to pull this out of this little pot and replant it directly in here, which makes me really nervous. I never like repotting things if it's unnecessary because it's just, I don't want to stress the little babies, but also it could be worth it for the aesthetic. Tell me what I should do. <laughs> Make my life decisions for me, please. All right. So that's it guys, that's everything. That is my plant haul. If you like the content about the plants, 
please let me know down below. I'm more than happy to talk about them. I would love to hear anyone's advice about any of these plants because I don't know a huge amount about individual plants and how to care for them. I just learn as I go. Uh, that app that I talked about, Picture This, is very useful. Once you read up on your plant and you understand the needs of each individual plant, you can remember it pretty easily. That's what I found. I was really scared to get into plants because I, in the past, I've always killed my plants and it was because, <laughs> okay, if you've got time, stick around. Um, when Dan and I moved into our first apartment, I he was like, okay, I'm gonna dress it up with house plants. And I went off, I bought, I think I spent $200 on house plants, put them all around the house. And I, I was like, yep, I'm gonna become a plant person. I'll get into a routine. I'll water them every week. And what I ended up doing was I would just get a big watering can and it was either once or twice a week, I would just go up to all of the plants and I would just water all of them the same. And within two months, almost all of the plants were dead. I think maybe two of them survived a year. None of them are left now. That was because a lot of people think, okay, they're plants, give them water, and you just go up to them and you just water them. And uh, no, they all need different watering cycles. This one, you water like once a month. This one, you might water once a fortnight. Some of them, the easiest way to do it is to get a moisture meter where you just stick it in the soil and it tells you dry all the way through to wet and it goes from zero to 10. Some plants like to always hover around like four in moisture content of the soil. Some like succulents thrive when it hovers at one. Some of them do really well when they're super moist. So like a Venus flytrap, for example, the soil always has to be 10 on the moisture scale. If it drops down and it dries out, the plant dies. And uh, you, what you do, you just learn for all of them what they need. And then I, I try to kind of arrange them around my house so that they're in categories. So it's like these ones, I know that I can water those once a week, those ones over there, I can only water once a month. Also, they all need different light requirements. You know, this one needs full direct sunlight, can tolerate heat, just like this one. But something like this might not do so well in the sun. I need to find out about, you know, all of these individually. But uh, yeah, anyway, if you want to get into plants, I really recommend it. I think start off with like a philodendron, a monstera, any monstera, any philodendron. Pothos, pothos are very, very easy to grow. The neon pothos, satin pothos, peperomias, I find they're quite easy as well. Don't worry too much if some of your plants die. Often garden centers will have sales. So like flower power, if one weekend every month, I think they do all plants are 20% off. So that was when I went, I went up to flower power and I got four different satin pothos. And if you can afford it, I recommend you do the same. If you find a plant you really like, get a couple of them and put them in different areas in your home. Uh, I'm in the Southern Hemisphere, so my Eastern facing window is the best for sunlight because the sun rises in the East and sets in the West here. I actually, the first plants that I got, I put them in a West facing window because I was like, ah, oh, yes, they want light. And when the sun's setting, the light is beaming on them. They roasted to death very quickly. <laughs> Wherever you are, Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, don't put plants in a windowsill that faces the sunset. It will roast them. Morning light is great. So for me, it's an Eastern facing window. The sun comes up, they start getting sunlight around seven, eight o'clock. They get sunlight all the way through, like basically direct sunlight touching them until 11 a.m. So from 8 a.m. until about 11 a.m. And then from 11 a.m. until, I mean, right now is 5 p.m. and there is still beautiful light coming in. The sun is not directly, you know, face, the sun isn't directly being in this window, but because the sun is setting on the opposite side, the light is actually sort of bouncing and they get sunlight all through the day in that spot. I do hear a lot of people uh, in America online, they say you should grow your plants in a south facing window, which is the equivalent of my north facing window. And I tried that once. I put some plants on a north facing windowsill and they lasted there like two weeks and then they were toast. Not as bad as the west window, but they were still toast. So if you are going to put anything in a windowsill that gets full sunlight all day, it's got to be a hardy kind of plant. So that's why I recommend if you find some plants you like, get a couple of them, put one in each window and just see how it does. And also people have their own personal taste in what they want their plants to look like. If a plant gets lots of sunlight, it'll normally bring out its unique sort of colorations. So if a plant has some pink on it and you put it in the direct sunlight, 
theoretically the pink should show more but some people might think oh you know I want to keep the leaves on this darker I really like the look of these leaves if they're dark so you don't want to give it as much sunlight so just have fun that's the whole thing about plants have fun experiment so anyway that's enough talking I hope you guys enjoyed today's video please subscribe if you haven't already give me a thumbs up on this to let me know that you like the plant content sorry about the lack of Archie today plants are poisonous for birds friendly disclaimer that I keep my plants in rooms that have doors that the bird can't access. Many of these insta-kill for birds and for dogs and cats too. So if you have pets, I think I might have to make a separate video about pet friendly plants. If you have some favorite pet friendly plants that you'd like me to include in my list in that video, just let me know down below. So anyway, with that, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mwah!